Hi, this is Jim from StarryHope.com, and today I'd like to show you how you can do web development and other kinds of development on a Chromebook. Now, you might have heard that Chromebooks are just basically a Chrome web browser, and you have to do everything online. But this is not true, especially with modern Chromebooks, and especially with the Chromebook Plus lineup of computers. The first thing you're going to need to do is install the Linux development environment. You can do that by clicking on the settings and scrolling down to advanced and developers. Just click on turn on underneath the Linux development environment. Click next. Here you can name this whatever you want, but I suggest giving it about 30 gigabytes of space. This will take a few minutes to quite a long time, depending on how fast your device is and how fast your internet speed is. Once the installation is finished, you'll see a terminal window automatically appear. You'll probably want to pin this to your shelf so that you can find it easily in the future. The first thing you'll want to install is Docker. And to do that, we can type sudo apt update and run that to get our latest package information, and then run sudo apt install docker.io. This will install the Docker engine that we can use in order to run our development environments. Once that's done, we'll need to add ourselves to the Docker user group by typing sudo usermod-a capital G docker dollar sign and then all caps user. Once we're done with that, we'll need to close out, sign out of our account, and sign back in real quickly to get that group permissions that we need. Once we're logged back in, we can install Visual Studio Code. To do that, just open a browser tab and search for VS Code. When you go to the website, you'll see the download for linux.deb file. That's a Debian file, which we can install on our Chromebook. Download that file. And then once it's in downloaded, you'll find it in your downloads folder. And all you really need to do is double click on it, wait for a few seconds for it to load up here, and then click the install button. It'll install in the background and you can see the status of the install in the bottom right hand corner. Once it's installed, you'll be able to find it in your application menu under Linux applications. You'll probably want to pin this to your shelf as well for easy access in the future. Let's go ahead and close Visual Studio Code for now and explore our Linux environment that we've newly installed. Open back up the terminal and you'll see this window pop up. And what you want to do is click on the penguin and then you'll get a terminal window. Let's make a directory for our code. Now, this is actually going to show up in the file browser under Linux files. So you can see our code folder here. We can make directories inside the file manager or in the, direct, in the terminal like we would normally expect. So we'll make one for Astro, because we're going to build a quick Astro project here. And then we can CD into that directory. So we can do CD code uh, Astro. And just like on Mac or Windows, we can open Visual Studio Code inside this directory by typing code space and a dot and hitting enter. Go ahead and trust this directory since we're going to be the only ones working in it. And then we want to click on the button in the bottom left hand corner to open a remote window. What we want to do is click on dev container and this will install the extension that we need in order to use a Docker container for our development environment. And what we want to click on is add configuration to workspace. I would like to use Ubuntu for this project. So we'll start with Ubuntu and we'll use the, the default. And then I'd like to add node. And I like to use the ones with the little badge on them 
denoting that they're made by the Microsoft team. Go ahead and click OK. And then we can keep the defaults. And in the background, it'll start to reopen our project in a development container. And it starts to download all of the container images that are needed and install a node for us in this case. But you can do this with any distribution um, and with pretty much any programming language or tool set that you would need for a modern web or any kind of development. This will take some time depending on your internet speed and how long it takes to download. Once everything is finished setting up, we can open up a terminal by clicking on Terminal and then New Terminal. The terminal that we'll see here is for our container. So as you can see, we're using VS Code uh, username in an actual Ubuntu container, not on our Chromebook directly. Now if we go over to the Astro site and copy the command we need in order to set up an Astro project, we can just paste it in here. And you can see Node is working. It's going to download some dependencies and start us through the setup process. We can just make a test folder. We'll do the blog template. We're going to use TypeScript. Um, we want to install dependencies, but I don't want to set up a Git repository right now. Once that's finished installing, we can CD into our test directory and start our server with npm start. This will automatically set up all of our port forwarding and give us a button where we can launch this directly in our browser. And here you can see our test site that we just started up here with this simple blog template. If we go back to Visual Studio Code and find our index page, we can make a change real quick and just make sure that everything is working. So we come down to Source and Pages and our index page, and let's just add a couple extra exclamation marks here. Save that and see Yep, the automatic refresh is working. So you're all set up and ready to start your development. Now, what kind of Chromebook are you going to need in order to work and do development at a reasonable speed? If you go to starryhope.com and you go to our Chromebook section and our comparison guide, here you can do a lot of filtering and sorting to find the right Chromebook. What you want to do is click on Chromebook Plus and performance. This is the Chromebook that I'm using, the Dragonfly Fly Pro. It's about a thousand dollars, which is really kind of ridiculous. Um, but you can get the same processor in this Lenovo IdeaPad gaming Chromebook, which has turned out to not be very popular, but the same processor, uh, a smaller SSD and only eight gigs of RAM for a significantly lower price generally about half the price of the Dragonfly, Dragonfly Pro. And I would highly recommend if you want to explore Chrome OS and development that you check that out. There's also this uh, Asus Chromebook Plus CX34. It's not quite as powerful as the other ones, but you might like it better. Um, and it's still even cheaper. You can find this for around $400. So you don't really need to spend a lot of money to get a Chromebook that is going to give you the ability to do web development. So I hope that helps you out. Stay tuned. Please subscribe to the channel and give us a thumbs up. It really helps us out. And stay tuned for more videos to come.